M A M A L O H O A M A M A L O H O A Mama Maloa Highway Having breakfast with Bob Oh yeah Pacho Man I'm a round of applause for our man Pacho Man we are presented by EA Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar Timex, Roca, Tanya Puna Resort, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch. Our next guest, three-time Olympian, goes back to the, in the sport till when the earth was still cooling, 1992, <laughs> Mr. Tim Don. How about a round of applause for Mr. Tim Don? Oh, you're making me feel great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Nine, how old were you in 1992? Um, 1992, I was 31. <laughs> So, yeah, no, no, um, <laughs> no, 92, I was um, 14. 14, and <laughs> yeah. what got you in the triathlon? Um, well, indirectly, Spencer Smith, he probably doesn't know it. <laughs> he will now. Yeah, that's One it. One of our favorite guys. <laughs> no, um, we swam in the same swim squad, or he was in the A squad, I was in the B squad. Yeah. And um, he'd always get in the pool by running halfway down the pool and diving in, and the coach would go nuts, but that was like his thing. And yes. One day after swimming, he turned up in his, you know, gangster car in West London. Yeah. Got out a pink um, Evans bike with tri spokes, and I was like, "What is that? I want some of that." And I joined the local triathlon club, and here we are now. <laughs> Spencer had a little fashion to him. Ah, oh, yeah, no, very fresh, very London. I and love that it. whole rivalry with Spencer and Simon—they didn't like each other. Really, I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, it was great. It was oh, good for the sport. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and it was a global. It was the two best in the world, we and it was hated each other. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I remember Simon telling me there were times he was worried that Spencer's dad, Bill, was going to jump out of the crowd and beat the crap out of him during oh, the race. I think he tried that a few times actually. Yeah, and then you throw. throw um, um, Bill Black, who was Spencer's coach back then, the yeah. two Bills together in a car, oh, they'd go nuts when he was racing. So yeah, no, it was yeah, it it's was good really era. passionate about sport. So no, it was brilliant. So what was your first world championship? Um, um, 1995 ITU Junior um, Cancun. Yeah, and that wasn't drafting yet, right? It was draft, draft. It was yeah, and it illegal. It, and it was the old school where it was 17 to 20 year olds right. non-drafting. So I turned up as a 17-year-old who was a, so high, and Craig Walton was a last-year junior who was, was like, like six, eight foot tall. <laughs> you know, he was you know kicking ass in the seniors. So I, yeah, yeah. I got schooled that day. Let me tell you. <laughs> so as you're progressing, were you on the, the? When did you find out that the triathlon was going to be in the Olympics for the first time, and was that become your media goal? Oh, as soon as we found out about that, it was. But before then, I mean, back then, you wanted to win ITU Worlds. Right. And then you wanted to come and win Kona. You know, that, those, so you were even the, thinking Kona even back oh, then? Oh, yeah. Because I mean, that really was all the, there wasn't a lot else out there. No, it was like, once you've done that, you know, the boys were moving up, whether it was Welshy, you know, yes. Wes Hobson, you know, Mike Pig. Right. You know, the guys on the front covers of the magazine back then, that's what they did. And then 1998 at Lausanne World Champs, which is the home of the IOC, right. they announced 2000, you know, it was going to be, so be in the Olympics. Two years away. Two years away. And that was my last year as a junior, um, yeah, racing. And I thought, well... Up at Kona on hold and, yeah, give this Olympic thing a bit of a crack. <laughs> a little bit crack. And talk about making that first team, going to, you know, going to that 2000 Olympics in Sydney. Mm. The first, I mean, how, how historic was that to be there for the first ever Olympic triathlon? Oh, I mean, when I think about it now, it still gives me goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, Australia are passionate about a lot of things, sport being one of them, and triathlon is, is massive there. Top of the there. list, yeah. Diving in behind the Sydney Opera House. The transition area was on the steps of the Sydney Opera House. I was in a team of Simon Lesson and Andrew Johns, who were, Simon was hands down favorite. The favorite, no question. AJ had won, I think, four World Cups that year, so he was the boy to beat. And I was just a, just tagging on as a 20-year-old. So, you know, I had a ball there. And, um, yeah, no, that definitely, you know, the crowds went nuts. So I remember one point, I think it was the second lap, I was running with Peter Robinson. Yes. And I had to either run away from him or slow down because the noise was absolutely deafening. Robo, Robo. Yeah. So, um, no, it was it was an amazing experience. And, you know, to be part of a global event like that, you know, that was so new to triathlon. You know, there was, wasn't this social media thing that we have now where right. we can we can get triathlon out there a lot. So to be along the likes of meeting Hale Gabri Selassie in the Olympic Village, <laughs> seeing the Dream Team, the USA <laughs> basketball team in the village, it, it really was, yeah... I'd recommend it, <laughs> and as an experience. <laughs> so then you stay on the Olympic path, right? So uh, tenth in two thousand. Yeah. So getting you know top ten at your first ever Olympics. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then uh, 18th in 2004, Athens. Now, the cool thing about, about Sydney was the fact that it was the women's triathlon was the first event of the games yeah. the second day was a men so it was a showcase event they were showcasing the city of sydney uh to the world through the sport of triathlon so being the second day it, then you go to athens uh, compare the olympic experiences um well it's, it's different obviously you know with it being the first time right. australia being so yeah. passionate and athens you know i mean the greeks are not known for for world-class right. triathletes right right and also as an athlete, you know, you go there with different expectations, you know, four years on, you know, you're looking to... You want to win. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not, you're, the experience is great. You don't need the picture with the dream team this time. No. You, you want to win. Well, I wouldn't You still want, no. you still want. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and um, you know, and I think then um, a lot of the federations, you know, the big federations funding had kicked in. Right. So all of a sudden it escalated this whole level of professionalism. Right training camps of sports scientists some races would turn up to there were more support staff than right. athletes racing yeah. um you know it was a very calculated approach to you know executing the best race and you know i learned so much leading up to that um the course was absolutely unique in the fact i think the bike had a, a, had a big climb right two, well not steep 20 yes. 22 23 percent yeah. every lap and um yeah, and I didn't have my, my greatest day that year, but again, um, you know, you learn so much and to be part of it w was amazing. But, you know, it's a funny thing, you know, you, I think you get two sorts of people that go to the Olympics for their country. You get the guys like me in Sydney who, who are, you know, they've made the team, you know, it's fantastic, you know, that's part of it. And then you get the guys who are fighting for they the podium. They want to win, right. And the day after the race, my gosh, talk about highs and lows. You can see, you know, 15 guys who, who are fighting for the medals not get the medals. Man, it's as if the whole world's ended. It really is, um, you know, and for me, it was a different experience, you know, the race and right. after the race. And picking yourself up off that, you know, takes a while, especially, there are only three guys that can, <laughs> and girls that can We're going to be podium. happy, Absolutely. right. Absolutely. And then you got to wait four years. I know. If that's yeah, a thing. That, that's what makes it, you know, the pinnacle of triathlon in some regards, right. is that you get one bite of the cherry four years, and depending how your career goes, sometimes you get one bite, sometimes you get more than one bite. Yes. Um, and so you got three. I got three, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> when did you feel like, like you said early on, Kona Kona was in the back of your head. Yeah. When did you think it was time? to move on to longer distance? Um, I think um, after Beijing Olympics 2008, yeah. things, I got food poisoning just before the race. Oh, so, yeah. you know, unfortunately, I, I, got, I, I didn't finish the race. Um, I tried a 70.3 in South Africa, which was, um, you know, I spent a lot of time yes. there. And I got fourth. And I really enjoyed it. And the different aspect of, of not so much the racing, but it's all about me. Sure. And what I can do as opposed to tactics. Our and team, being a team guy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, so, so then I, I thought, yeah, but London was calling. Home Olympics. Yes. I'm a London boy at heart. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So, you know, I, I decided to really focus on London. And then, you know, after London, you know, I, 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 although I did start a long time ago, I still thought I was young enough to, right. to, 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 you know, you know have, a, have, a go at, have a go at Kona. Um, so after London was when I really truly, ch ch um, you know, um, changed my focus. And by then there's a, a, a very successful 70.3 series that Ironman put See, that, on. that all of a sudden and that came out of, because it used to yeah. be, you had to go Olympic distance to Ironman, oh my right? God. You had to go four times as far. I couldn't imagine that. <laughs> yeah. So you, then you started 70.3, yeah. you got third at the Worlds in Mount Blanc in 2014. So obviously you're doing the right stuff. What did you, what was the toughest part of that transition? Um, I think moving to america with my family basically emigrating you know i i'd been settled in europe and yes. south africa for so much and, yes you know it's not just me and my wife we had a daughter then as well so you know getting the visa and then moving across you know that's a big you know when, you're, when you're in your life. mid 30s it's all my sponsors were european based so i basically had to start start from start scratch over, yeah um you know and you know i had people had faith in me but there were times when you you doubt yourself you sure. Know, but um, yeah, I started working with Julie, great coach. Julie Dibbins. Julie yes. Dibbins. Yeah, she she's, she's done all right here. I oh guess. Yeah, she's <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, having her in my corner has been been a crucial part of my transfer from ITU seventy point three and and now Ironman. Um, so, and so this let you Ironman Mallorca. Mm -hmm. You would so you win you win a full Ironman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, you guess. How hard was that? Um. It was hard, you know, I think anyone that's kidding themselves says it's not, it's hard. Um, not so much, well, obviously the physical effort, but the mental, you know, application for eight hours to stay focused, you know, 
when you're used to a race that's an hour and forty. Absolutely, hour forty five. Yeah, and the fact it, you know, it, it, you know, the run is is a marathon. It was my first marathon I've ever run. Mallorca. <laughs> Mallorca was. <laughs> so, um, you know, I thought I'd have a really good warm up by yes. doing a hundred and eighty k bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be loose. Yeah, that's it. So no, you know, that was tough, and you know, but sure, when you win a race at your first bite, it, right. It, you know, maybe maybe it'd have been better if I hadn't have won. You know, and it had have been tougher. But you know, nutrition was was great for me. Yes. Pacing was great. You know, and I with it, I, I was able to run with it or well, race within myself and win and secure the points. Right. To, 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 to be get there. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, St George, right? 2015. Yep, St George. This yeah, you know, that was my A race this year, early season. U.S. Championships. Absolutely, and you know, the now year, that you're living in U.S. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, you, you've got to say North American Championship. Oh, North Canadians American. Canadians go nuts. Oh, okay, <laughs> you're right. North American, good point, good point, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, that was my first, you know, and it's, I did it the year before and got third, and it was a kick-ass field, and again, this year, you know, Kinlay was there. Unfortunately, he couldn't race. Right. Um, I think he actually heard I was going to race. So and he, so he, he got out. The pin. Yeah, I heard um, that. He's yeah, a yeah. wise man. Why is yeah, I give yeah, him credit exactly. for? Yeah, exactly. But you're, I mean, you're, you're 37 now. I am 37. 37, indeed, yeah. and you're a rookie. I know. God, can you? I'll tell you. I'll, just let forget the 37. Just call me a rookie. <laughs> so wait, I, I, 346 for 1500 meters. Oh yeah, running. Yeah, I've yeah. done that. Yeah, that's yeah. me. And did you get the run in the same race as Haile Gebrselassie? I did. Yeah, I did. Um, there's a big, big race <laughs> cool in England um, called the Great Manchester 10K. Yes. It's a road 10K, and yeah, I think 10, 10,000 maybe people do it, and yeah. You he, ran he beat me by, 28.56. Yeah, he beat me by 52 seconds, so over 10K, I'll, yeah, it's all But right. <laughs> 28.56? Yeah, it was windy, so. <laughs> that is, that's good stuff. Yeah. What did, like you said, you, this is always in the back of your mind mm -hmm. because this was the pinnacle. Now that you're here, have you been here before to watch? Um, I was here in 2011. Okay. Um, I was with Specialized. I remember and, that. Yeah, they, they launched the shiv yeah. and so forth. But I was very much an ITU athlete. Jan, Javi and Whitfield were here. And you guys were all we like did the manta race swimming, you know, <laughs> we did the night night beers and, you know, we were doing lots of media vacation. stuff and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. And then obviously, Crowey made it look easy. Yes. So, You're you like, what's well, a big deal? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> and then I came here in February for two weeks with Julie, Rachel, Pat Evo and, uh, ah. and Michelle. So yeah, we came here for two weeks to, with, with two of the most experienced women out there to, to train on the course. What did yeah. you What did you gain from that? Because it's this, a long this course and back. Yes. It's windy. It's hot, and it's not going to be much fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You come here with this idyllic dream that Kona. You know, you see breakfast with Bob, and yes. you know, you see the guys crossing the line, kissing the guns. You know, you, yeah, it's not it's not yeah. just that. <laughs> you're watching on TV, you hear the music, you're Absolutely. sitting in air conditioning, you're going, this is great. Then you're out there and there's nothing. Yeah, you know, you, you, you've got to be prepared for this race on, on every front. And yes. you've, you've got to be, um, you know, you've got to be ready for all sorts of conditions. You know, uh, this week people are saying it's the windiest, it's the hottest, the I've sea's heard that warmer, for 30 the years. swell is the biggest. And, yeah. you know, you need to listen, but also, you know, if you look at Almanac, you can see the temperature for this week has differed, I think, 0.3 of a degree over the last 10 years. So it's not hotter. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. Yes. Um, so you need to listen um, and, you know, listen to some guys who have raced it differently and won differently and lost differently. Um, but ultimately, you know, I listen to Julie. <laughs> so yeah, I was going to ask if you talked to any of the other... Uh, Iron Man folks. Yeah, besides you know, you. Crowe's been great. Yeah, you know, you know, he's he's more than more than happy to pick the brain. And yes. um, he's I, not racing. No, he's not racing. That's which so is why he'll tell you right. stuff. Yeah, you know, even even the Hoff, you know, he's um, a real level level-headed guy, and you know, hopefully, he hasn't been giving me a load of BS. But um, you know, he's a you know, it's such a community sport. It no is. one's no one's trying to say. There's secrets, you know, there are no secrets no, here. It's 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 um, you against the course at the end of the day. You've got to be smart and. You know, I, I am a rookie, but I am 37, and I've, I've been around the block a, a fair bit. Yes. So, you know, in terms of, I guess, the how to race the course, you know, there's the certain thi things that are going to fall into my favor yes. and not into my favor. And, 
you know, when the biker boys attack, you know, I'm not necessarily going to go with them. But when the swim's on, I'll relish with that. So, you know, I'm going to race my race. And, um, you know, I'm sure there will be decisions that I have to go above and beyond what exactly. I'm capable of in yes. that moment. But hopefully they'll be calculated and they won't come to bite me in the, the butt in the energy <laughs> lab. <laughs> Do you, ITU races are so strategic yeah. over the years. This is sort of strategic, but different. When you look at this race, do you study the other guys? Do you? Because I'm sure you knew every tendency of Alistair Brownlee and Javier Gomez, and yeah. you knew when they were going to do what. They go fast. All yeah, the way. all the, they just go hard <laughs> off the front. Yeah. Or is it the type of thing? I'm listening to Julie. I'm preparing mm -hmm. the best way for myself, and whatever happens, happens. Um, a bit of both. I mean, okay. you know, yeah, history is great. You know, if you look, I think um, the winner of this race has come the top four the year before for the last couple of years. A lot there's of only them have one been second, yeah. There's only one rookie, you know, that's 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 won the race. Luke Van Leer. Luke Van Leer. 1996. You know, and, but the, but the, the sports evolved from then. You yes. know, there are tactics involved. You know, you will see people going, why isn't, let's say, Starkovic attacking? Oh, he's waiting. Well, in, in the old days, you know, you got, um, you know, Hell on Wheels and... Thomas Hellrigal, yeah. Yeah, and who else? You know, the Zach Jürgen attack. Zach. Yep. I hope I bike quicker than this year he's racing. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, those guys, they hit the bike and they just went. You right. know, Wolfgang, he'd hit the swim and he'd go. Well, now you've got people maybe sitting in the swim for a 2K and then hammering down the back end. So there are still tactics. But, um, you know, we all know each other. We race a lot more than the old school you right, know, yeah, you were racing every do. week, yeah, and, um, yeah. You know, we can now follow the race results. We don't just see a result. We know how they achieve that with the splits, with the timing and yes. so forth. Um, and people putting their power files up on, on um, is it Strava? Yeah, Strava, all, yeah. all sorts of things. So, no, we, we take that, I guess, data and what people are doing. But at the end of the day, I'm me, and I'm going to race how I'm going to race. Yan is Yan, Kinley's Yan, the Hoff is Hoff. Yes. And, you know, I think we're, we, we, I think, you know, how we expect our, our day to go, we're yes. going to try and execute that as best we can. We're not going to get lucky and get in a breakaway, you know, like you can <laughs> yeah, in ITU go off the front. and so yeah, yeah. forth. Um, so, yeah, no, I think we'll stick to the plan as, as best as possible. When you look back at a career that started in 1992, <laughs> is there one race that sticks out? Is it that Sydney race or are there other um, races that stick out as your best? I think um, winning a world title in Lausanne yeah. um, in 2006. The, the year before, um, I'd run three World Cups, so they're called WTSs yes, now. Yeah. You know, I'd been very consistent, and unfortunately, um, I swallowed my tongue. I passed out in the in the World Champs in 205. <laughs> so yeah, things didn't go my way. So um, 206, we decided I was working with Brett Sutton to put all our eggs in one basket. Yes, all World Championship. I live 50k away in Lazar in Laysin training. So that was a big race. There was a breakaway off the front which I wasn't in, and I jumped across on the bike on my own, and then I still got the quickest run. So for me, that was really satisfying, and you know, yeah, that was that was where it was at for me. The other race, the High V 2010, 200 thousand dollars in one day. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, um, yeah, my um, my wife was pregnant at the time, and um, so yeah, no, it, it, we yeah, it meant a lot to us, and yes. you know, um, yeah, it, it's a good race to win, and I'd been fourth there before, and I think I'd always top ten or right, um, but yeah, I, I was running. That was the year I ran my. 28 on the road with so i was in great run shape the bike was was pretty pedestrian right so i took it out hard and again you know the kiwis and the um i think it was yan was with us yeah, actually, Fernando, as well. yeah, yeah. yeah and we went through a k in 242 and i remember the kiwis <laughs> going 242 and everyone looking at each other and i was just like pushed on <laughs> and you know i got a gap early and that was I, it i backed myself and to, to, to hang on so yeah we love having you here hey uh, no i love, love being the here. personality <laughs> love the energy you bring uh 37 year old rookie you know what luke van leard came here and he had never run a marathon before yeah. when he won this thing you've done that now Yes, sir. Was that, have you run, how many marathons now? I've run um, two because I did one on a treadmill. <laughs> you did one on a treadmill? Yeah, I was in Vegas um, um, at this Consumer Electronics yeah. Show, and I was doing, um, I did an Ironman, actually, indoors. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? Um, it was in January. It was for Polar. We yes. did, I did. I swam in the Venetian swimming pool. And, um, yeah, I rode on a computrainer yes. for 180K. And then I ran. Actually, I lie. I ran 40K on the treadmill. Oh, uh, 2K short. No, yeah. no. Well, the last 2K then was down the strip. Oh, <laughs> police, wow. Police escort. And then we had a finish in front of the Sands Convention Center. How fun was that? 
What you, not fun. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Like, Why well, are you running you going? I just said. Yeah. <laughs> for all of us watching in front of the stands, no, yeah. that would have been fun. No, not for you. It was unique, you know. Yeah, and yeah, it was great to be a part of. Um, yeah. You must have been thinking during the run, going, "What did I commit I know, to?" Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I they appreciated it. <laughs> I love it. I love no, it. Yeah. So my third marathon. Um, on Saturday. I yeah. love it. Tim Don has been our guest. How about a round of applause? <laughs> we are presented by ES Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca, Tanya Pura, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch, and Mr. Poncho Man. Mama Maloa Highway, riding in the sun. Yeah, we're having fun. Breakfast with Bob. It's breakfast with Bob. Breakfast with Bob. Poncho Man! Woo! with our studio audience.